Today's guest is Casey Flood, and she is a nutritionist who specializes in maternal and child nutrition. She worked in public health as a nutrition counselor and now owns an online nutrition coaching business, Raising Tiny Foodies. I love that name. She educates moms on how to feel confident about nourishing themselves and their families by simplif simplifying clean eating. She's passionate about encouraging moms to take care of themselves and build healthy habits that'll last them and their little ones a lifetime. And I love that nutrition is so important. And so Casey shared that um, to live greater is the, she has these four pillars. So first, I just want to welcome Casey onto the show. Welcome, Casey. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here. Yeah. You're welcome. And so Casey talks about nutrition and for your little ones and, I, and for everyone, right? Um, yeah. And it's such, I think, especially those with littles, it's hard sometimes to know how to, uh, don't want to cater to them, but help them to understand foods and things. So can you go ahead and share with us your four pillars that, that you like to talk about and share? and teach about? Yeah, yeah, of course. So um, I developed these four pillars for nourishing your body as a mom because you had said I am a huge advocate for taking care of yourself as a mom. I think that's something that as we start to have kids, our health and um, really the way that we're eating and the time we're spending on ourselves kind of like shoots to the bottom of our priority list. So these are kind of mm -hmm. four things, um, areas that you should really be focusing on daily to take care of yourself as a mom and to nourish your body because that is important and it's also important for our kids to see as a mom that it is important to take care of yourself so that's yeah. just a little bit about what they are they're kind of four daily habits that um that I think all moms should have so the first one is nutrient dense meals so I always say your breakfast shouldn't be your coffee and your lunch shouldn't be your kids scraps right because as moms <laughs> that's usually usually what it is take the time to make sure that you're making yourself that nutrient dense meal. So we have to kind of explain what that means. We have, there's kind of two different types of foods. So there's empty calorie foods. So these are foods that have, um, you know, contribute calories, but little to no nutritional value. And then you have your nutrient dense foods. And these are foods that contribute calories, but also a wide array of other nutritional benefits. So empty calorie foods tend to be kind of our more, when you think of like those snacky foods, like chips, cheeses, fishies, pretzels, um, and then those nutrient dense foods tend to be more whole foods. So produce, fruits and vegetables, meat, dairy, whole grains. So just making sure that you are taking time for breakfast, lunch, dinner, and maybe two or three snacks throughout your day that are nutrient dense. So include those whole foods and not just that quick, like grab it in the fridge or grab it in the pantry on the way through the kitchen while you're running around doing other things. Um, so that's, that's that first pillar is really taking the time to make sure that you're eating nutrient dense meals throughout the day. And take, do you have tips on how people can put those foods into their, their, men, their regular diet? Yeah. So, I mean, I'm a huge advocate for meal planning and I have a meal plan membership just because I believe as moms, this is something when you have that plan, it's a lot easier to, when you jump into the kitchen and you're like, okay, I need to make myself breakfast. If you already have planned out what you're going to make, it makes it 10 times easier, right? Cause you, yeah. you've limited that hurdle of like, what am I supposed to eat? What am I going to make? So meal planning, meal prepping every Sunday. Um, I spend like a large chunk of my Sunday in the kitchen, just prepping as much as I can, um, to help me. Lunch is usually something that's already been made that I can just throw in the microwave or throw on the stove really quick. Um, so meal planning, meal prepping, and then just really finding, People sometimes I find try to just make, I don't want to say they try to make it complicated, but always, you know, like think if you eat healthy, that it needs to be like this long drawn out process. It needs to be this really like elaborate meal. And it doesn't have to be that at all. You can find something really quick, um, quick and easy focus on making sure your meals have all three macros. So some type of protein, some type of fat and a carbohydrate. That's kind of the tips I would give. Okay. Awesome. That's good. And so the second pillar is hydration. So making sure that you are really taking into account your water intake throughout the day. Um, hydration is needed for just the normal functioning of our body. So if you want to feel better, if you want to have more energy, just starting with your water intake can really go a long way. So limiting the, if you drink any sugar, sweetened beverages, so soda, sweet tea, Gatorade, Powerade, any of those sport type drinks, um, even vitamin water, and really trying to limit your intake of those and instead focusing on water. So we should be drinking about eight cups of water a day, which is 64 ounces. 
Um, so something that I do that I find really helpful is I keep one of those, I think it's like 32 ounces, um, the big insulated water bottles, fill that with ice water and I keep it somewhere where I'm gonna be reminded to drink throughout the day. Because again, as moms, we're running around doing 10 million things. So kind of having it somewhere that's a reminder. I'm a checklist person. Like I have a planner that has daily checklists that I am referring back to all day to make sure to get everything done. So I leave my water right by my planner because I'm going over there constantly all day to check things off. And that's my reminder to take a drink in between doing those chores. Um, another thing is just, just put it by your phone. A lot of people nowadays were on our phones kind of throughout the day. So put it next to your, always keep it next to your phone. And that's kind of your reminder when you go to grab your phone also to take a drink of water. Um, that's so that's something I found really helpful. Yeah. So just focusing on your, that second pillar is just focusing on your hydration. Now most, I mean, our bodies are made up of mostly water. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. It seems like when we feel hungry, we're actually more dehydrated than hungry. That's what yeah. I've, so I'll try and remind true. myself instead of grabbing something else, drink some water first. Yeah. And you can always, I always, encourage some of people are just like I don't like water so plain I need some type of flavor oh wait you can add fruit cucumbers lemons limes to your water that sometimes when I kind of get in that lull of like I haven't been drinking as much water as I should I'll usually throw a cucumber or lemon or something in there to give it a little bit of flavor oh that's a good idea that's great yeah and then the third pillar is movement. So this is just 30 minutes of intentional movement. So it doesn't I'm not talking about like you don't have to do a rigorous workout every day. Um, just 30 minutes where you're moving your body movement. We live a pretty, I would say, sedentary lifestyle as a society and whole lot of us, you know, work a sedentary job where we're sitting. Um, our society just in general is a lot more sedentary than they used to be. And so that movement is something that I find that a lot of us are lacking and your movement is important for your bone health, your muscle health, your joint health, your digestive system, your lymphatic system, literally your body needs to move to be able to function properly throughout the day. So just kind of making it intentional to move for 30 minutes. And again, this doesn't have to be like working out for 30 minutes. It could be as simple as going for a walk, um, going outside and playing with your kids. If you are just having a crazy, stressful, hectic day, do some type of yoga or stretching. You can get your kids involved. There's, if you go on YouTube, you can type in like yoga with kids and you can do a yoga, following it on TV with your kids, and this gets them involved, which is good. We want them to be building these healthy habits along with us. That's the whole point of doing this, not just for ourselves, but for our kids. Um, so those are some other options. If you have a baby, I know this is really hard for moms to have like that newborn kind of really early on in infancy, wear your baby on you in a carrier and do house chores. So vacuuming, doing the dishes, sweeping, doing laundry and having that weight of the baby on you and kind of moving around is a really great way to kind of almost kind of in a sense work out without really working out kind of anything too strenuous. So yeah, I again, just 30 minutes of movement every day. I would mm -hmm. mow, mow with my baby on my back. <laughs> yeah, it's, a, it's, it's, you have to do what you have to do to get things done That's sometimes. Right. So you can kind of kill two birds with one stone. You get your house chores done and get your movement in for the day. So, yeah. yeah. And you're creating that bond with your, your baby. Yeah. Right? So yeah. Spending time with them as well. Yeah. With the third one, do you also mm -hmm. like how you meal plan? Do you plan out or like, um, you know, maybe from eight to 10, we're at least going to make sure we get in 30 minutes or how do you work that into your day with little ones and things? Yeah. So for me, I usually will try, I have a set time of the day where I try to get in my movement. So you, usually in the morning when my daughter naps, I just have my son, he can kind of, my daughter's 11 months old. So it's a little hard to have her out in our garage. So I will usually try to do some type of movement in there. So whether it's um, working out or if I do an actual workout, this can, you can still count your 30 minutes of movement as an actual workout. I just don't want everyone to think that it has to be working out. Right, right. Um, so sometimes we'll do that, or sometimes we'll do some type of yoga or stretching. If I can't fit that in, because I have days where, you know, I may be not feeling that good. My energy is low. We have something in the morning. I also kind of keep a um, time block in our day, usually right around when they wake up from their nap around three o'clock that will just kind of all either plan to go outside and play, get outside for a walk, usually try to get outside, um, especially mm -hmm. if we haven't been outside yet that day. Um, so kind of time blocking, I guess, um, a period of time in your day where you kind of have the availability to do something and you can even plan something specific, you know, like, okay, Tuesdays, um, we're going to go for a walk or in having those kind of schedule set things. If you're, um, 
I function on a routine and a schedule very well. So I like having a very, you know, plan of things to do. So that is something you can do if you're having a hard time fitting it into your schedule. Yeah. And I loved how you mentioned kind of intention, intentionally planning it. Right. Yeah. And I love how you mentioned about getting outside. Um, for me, that's mm-hmm. even myself, that's important. Just even if I take a step outside for a little bit, you know, just mm-hmm. to have that fresh breath of air and just calms the spirit to me. So that's great. Yes. Yeah. So what so is that's your- the third one is a third. Okay. The fourth one is um, I call it a me moment, but it's basically um, something that you're doing every day for your mental health. And it doesn't have to be very long because I know this is probably the hardest ones for moms to implement. It's because we have a hard time taking time for ourselves. Mm-hmm. And this is, I want you to just think of it's something that you are going to do for you. So outside of being a mom, outside of being a wife, outside of being, you know, if you work outside of the home, outside of that job title that you have, outside of being the home taker, you know, like I'm a stay at home mom. So outside, I'm not going to clean. I'm not going to do anything. I'm not going to declutter. I'm going to do something for me. So I always try to think of like, what would I do back before I had kids, before I was a wife, when I had free time. And so usually I'll read or, um, I'm very creative. So any type of like painting or embroidery, um, even if it's just going outside in the fresh air and having a cup of coffee, just something that I'm doing every day. And it could be five, 10, 15, 20 minutes, however long, um, just to kind of have a moment to yourself and reconnect with yourself and step out of that. I find as moms, we kind of get stuck in the roles of every day. So this kind of helps you detach from that and do something that's going to help you as a, just as a, as a woman, (laughs) instead of being a mom all the time. Rejuvenate yourself. Yeah. 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 Give yourself more. So I, if someone has trouble, I liked you pointed out about, okay, what did I do before I had kids? Sometimes, you know, we forget what are my creative aspects or what do I like to Mm -hmm. do? So to even think about what were your hobbies before you might've had kids. So Mm -hmm. that's a great way to, to remind yourself. And you were a nutritionist and what Mm -hmm. took you into that field? Like what made you have that desire to understand nutrition? Yeah. So this is a good question. So, um, I always knew I wanted to go into some type of healthcare. I've always been very like nurturing by nature. And so I knew I wanted to do something where I was helping people and I loved like medicine and just the way that our body functions and works. And so when I was in college, I was actually going to school to be a nurse and I had to take a nutrition class as part of my curriculum. And I like fell in love with it. I just loved, I've always been a big foodie. Hence the reason my business is named raising tiny foodies. So I've always (laughs) loved food. And then I got to kind of connect that passion and love I had for food and for cooking with kind of how that translates into how, you know, the human body digests food and how our body responds to food. Um, and so I think it was just a very natural fit for me. And so that's when I ended up changing my major to nutrition and, and ended up, um, getting my bachelor's degree in nutrition science. That's awesome. And you talked about earlier, um, with your first pillar that you do meal prepping for, Mm -hmm. and to help others. Um, Mm -hmm. and so I guess that routine, you said you're very, you like routines in, in a lot yes, of aspects yes. of your life. But, <laughs> and I find that true. Like when I've done meal planning in the past and when I don't do it, it really makes it hard. Like four o'clock in the afternoon, you're like, uh, what are we eating? What food do mm-hmm. we have? We can make, <laughs> that makes it really hard. Yeah. And I think that the meal planning is so important to help you have that nutrition because then you can plan ahead. You have the nutritional things. You're not just grabbing whatever, um, mm-hmm. So for you, why, why is meal planning important? Is that the same or do you have other aspects? Yeah, that- no, I think I, I, I didn't really honestly meal plan until I had kids and it took me a while to really figure out that I needed to meal plan um, because I was struggling. I mean, exactly like you said, breakfast and lunch, I was pretty good at, you know, being able to do, but it was like, once you hit that three o'clock, four o'clock, um, just like lulling your day, I call it, I've heard it kind of described as, um, I forget the actual term of it, but it's kind of like decision overload. So as moms, we're constantly Mm. all day making decisions, right? Your your kids are asking, can I do this? You're weighing out the options. Yes or no. You're, it's like, I don't know. You're just constantly in this like decision making mode all day. So then by three or four o'clock that, that, um, what should be, what, what should we eat? for dinner comes up and you're just like your brain can't function and can't even think of like I don't know what I should make for dinner 
And so I actually started meal planning just our dinner. So I would only focus on dinner. Mm. And there was a few weeks I'd kind of like fall off, fall off the, you know, the wagon and I wouldn't meal plan. And it was just like, I very, very quickly noticed what our diet looked like when I meal planned and what our diet looked like when I didn't meal plan. And just realizing like, I need, this is a need that I need to do, you know, and I found that it made my life just so much easier to kind of have that, um, that plan. Because if not, I, a lot of the times we were eating out a lot and we just felt awful. And um, I was happy and a hard time losing the baby weight and all of those things that just, I just felt really bad. And I knew I would feel better if I took the time to actually nourish my body with a nice meal (laughs) and a nutritious meal. Yeah. That's awesome. And I think as you say, you know, like we, to have healthier fit bodies, all your four pillars are so important. Like they all come together Mm -hmm. and just, just like you said, you eating out all the time or not eating those good foods, you felt kind of maybe just heavy or blah, whatever. Yeah. Kind of like a drag. You're in kind of like a, um, what's the word I always use for it? Kind of just lethargic. That's what I'm thinking of Mm -hmm. lethargic. You feel very kind of just like, eh, yeah. Yeah. And I, I love all those four pillars and how they all work together, you know, and so each mm-hmm. one are important to have those meals, those good meals mm-hmm. and to uh, stay hydrated, to move and um, to have that, that intentional movement, not just move mm-hmm. and then have your own space, your own time. So I love that. Um So can you tell everybody more about your meal planning and what you offer? Yeah. So right now I have a monthly meal plan membership. So it's a um, basically just a monthly meal plan subscription. So every month you get four weeks of a meal plan from me. So you get your Monday through, or it ends up being Sunday through Saturday meals, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. It comes with a corresponding grocery list and as well as a meal prep task sheet. So this is things you can do usually on Sunday. Like I said, I meal prep for the week a lot on Sunday, things that you can do at the beginning of your week to really help you save time throughout your week um, in the kitchen. And sometimes stuff you can do in the middle of the week too, just to kind of keep you ahead of the game. It's all optional things just to kind of help you keep track. So it's supposed to, the whole purpose of the meal plan is just, like I said, to make cooking meals at home and cooking those nutritious meals easy and nutritious and just keep you on top of the game. So That's what the meal plan membership is. Um, And that's the kind of one core offer that I do have right now. Yeah, that's that's it. I do have, um, I do have a free, a one week sample kind of meal plan. So if you were interested in checking it out, you can download the, the week for free and kind of see what the meals look like, the recipes, as well as um, kind of try it out and see, you know, how you feel after using it for the week. Yeah. And we'll have that link in the show notes as well. So Will you share every, with everybody your website? Yeah. So my website is raisingtinyfoodies.com. I'm much more active on um, Instagram at raising.tiny.foodies. So that's really probably the best place to connect with me. Well, thank you, Casey, so much for, for sharing these amazing tips. I think it is so important. Um, all four pillars, like you said, and and what you're you're providing too is this easy way to get started for people if they have trouble mm-hmm. right getting figuring what to eat. So you can provide that for them with your meal yeah. planning, and that's that's awesome. And the shopping list you said right. So yep. that's sometimes overwhelming too. Right? <laughs> yes. So so saves you a lot of time. <laughs> yeah, totally. Especially with a household kids or a few kids or whatever, or even just uh, people mm-hmm. who are busy that aren't moms. I think it will fit too. So that's great.